shit. Let's just start breaking this. Dub or bullshit. Dub or bullshit. No bullshit. Welcome to Facebook Live, people, to my office where the magic is made and nothing <laughs> has been rearranged for your viewing pleasure. There are not trophies here that I masturbate and rub my testicles on. <laughs> no. This is my office. This is where I write. This is where I hide. So I come in late at night to hide. Look at everybody yell at me on Facebook Live, man. How are you, Karen? Hey, Mark. Hey. Great. You got some cool stuff in there, Charlie. Can you just kind of give me a thumbnail of what's what's behind you? What's to your left? I see a mug shot over your right shoulder. Oh, the mug shot uh, uh, says Detroit Police, January 15th, 1993. I was arrested in a vacant building. I was a um, school teacher at a, at a, um, wh what would we call it? I guess you'd call it a charter school before there were. It was for all the kids that got kicked out of regular school and had to go somewhere. It was called Casa Maria. And huh. I would, I would get the worst of those kids. So I wasn't even an accredited teacher, but I'd teach everything, you know. What'd you get and, arrested uh, for, Charlie? For trespass. Okay. I'm like, oh, come on, man. So I'm sitting in jail. I had I had a college um, field trip set up for these kids at the uh, College for Creative Studies. I got them blast, glass blowing classes, pottery classes, and we we're supposed to go on the tour. You know these mm. juvenile delinquents, and we had to cancel the tour because the teacher was sitting in the can. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> that would be a reason to. <laughs> so you know it's the old do as I do as I say, not as I do. And uh, what else yeah, do you have in there? My, what else? What other mementos are in there that you love? It's a really nice I, office. Uh, it is. It's really you. cool. You're I got this. I got this. You can't see it when you're listening <laughs> to the podcast, but on Facebook Live, I got this gigantic light bulb. Can you see it right there? Yeah. Except for ideas. Yeah, there it is. This light bulb. <laughs> yeah. This light bulb I got at the very top of the Empire State Building. If you think about it, Google it. And you'll see the red light at the very top. It's like 1,200 feet above sea level. And this light bulb went out. And I did a story about the guys who maintained the needle and the light bulb. Oh, man. And we climbed up to the top and took it out. And I wrote my grandfather's name on the filament here. Oh, Not the mm -hmm. filament, but whatever this is called. So my grandfather's name's up there. And this says, uh, Charlie LaDuff was there, Empire State Building. Top of the world, January 2001, a couple months before 9-11. Yeah. Charlie, you have done like some crazy stuff. You're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid of anybody. But out of all the things that you've done, I mean, you've lived a pretty cool life. I mean, your, your mementos speak volumes. Your stories tell the rest of the story. But out of all the things that you've done, what is the one thing that you'd still like to do? Um, well, shit. <laughs> well, you know, look, I love New York. I love it. I love it with all my heart. It's awesome. I, I, here's, a, here's a book I wrote about it right over here. Hold on. <laughs> right over here. Uh, right here. I'm very proud of this book here. It's called Work and Other Sins, yeah. Life in New York City and Thereabouts. So... It was life in New York. The book, you know, it's got the Lennox Lounge in Harlem on the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about life in New York City at the turn of the century and the millennium, right? And I used to have a column called Bending Elbows. It was a drinking column, mm -hmm. whether it was a, a debutante's ball or a bum under a bridge, you know, burning a fire in his can or whatever it may be. And when I started that column, I went looking for the tavern life in 1900 because Bat Masterson. Mm -hmm. was a right was a columnist in New York, blah blah blah, and it didn't exist. And I was like, "Well, man, I'm gonna capture the history of this town and this." So, 
thinking about that, you know, I love New York. I love LA. It gave me my daughter, my first home. I love Oakland, California, but I love Detroit the most. I really love Detroit. It's my people. You know, uh, I feel what I really like to do in life is, is make some kind of appreciable, measurable, tangible difference in our lives and prove it that it has some sort of sticking power, some ability to last. Like, like, you know, we don't have to live like this, right? You know, it's, it's normal to us and it's so abnormal. You can just see with the COVID response, you know, how New York deals with, with it and how their governor speaks, you know, the power grid there, the, the water, the, the roads, even, I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. The poverty is ridiculous. The politics are ridiculous. And I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a crusader or anything, but just can we, if we could really fix, if we could fix the schools, that would be great. So I don't know what it is. I would just like to be able to say on my deathbed, you know, I helped that town, you know, and I wrote oh. that book Detroit. I'm proud of it. I know it'll hang around too, but you know, I thought that was like from when, when we fell down, you know, that book was finished in mm -hmm. 13 and here we are again. Now it's well, 2020 and we fell down again. Keep doing what you're doing, Charlie. You know, I, I'm, I'm one day I'm going to show you the rest of my office. I know it looks crazy, <laughs> but I've got, I've got uh, Charlie LaDuff shit show up there. Uh, I've got your other book and I can't see the name of it from here, but I've got a whole shelf with some of your stuff on it. So I'm going to have to show you the, my other wall one day, but we had some other stuff to do today. Yeah. Well, you know, let me just say, you know, how meaningful that is from a dude from the corner of Joy Road and Wayne Road that we'd be sitting here today and I would know you and we'd be very good friends. And I wrote some books that you mm -hmm. find interesting oh, and attractive. Yeah. I never would have guessed that in a million years. Well, I have something more important. And this is, I'm going to pull this off of my bulletin board over here. And this is a note that you wrote me. What's it say? It says, says Kay, oh. I'm happy to be your friend. <laughs> C. Oh, that's cool. And it's I have true. that. And I keep it right here. Nice. I do. It's right there on my wall. That's right cool. Over there. <laughs> well, guess what? Okay, so getting into it. Let's just focus on a minimum of things today. I want to do two things. Okay. I want to do the ballot of one lung for Tuck, who it's a wild was awaiting thing. sentencing for armed robbery when he fell ill with COVID at the Wayne County Jail in Detroit. He was taken to Harper Hospital, where his health rapidly unraveled. He only has one lung, and he caught the COVID, okay? He was left for dead by the sheriff's officials. He was unshackled from his gurney, and he was issued discharge papers in his in his fog. They gave him a 20% survival uh, chance. Wow. Well, he made a marvelous recovery. <laughs> and when he woke up, there were his shoes, there was his discharge papers, and he got the fuck on. He got wow. the fuck on. So he's on the lam. And I spoke to him when he was on the lam. And we're going to hear that. We're also going to, I really want to talk about Dana Nessel and Flint. We had Jordan on a couple um, weeks ago, was it? Mm -hmm. yep. It was two, two, weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago. It was two weeks ago. Yeah, he, he wrote a long piece mm -hmm. in Flint. I mean, in, in Vice about Flint and where this investigation is going and whatnot. And I'll reveal to you now, I helped him with that for a year. So he published it. And now there's blowback. Right. And now they're talking about where did he get the documents? Are they going to open investigation on these sealed um, interviews with Governor Snyder's right hand man, et cetera? Well, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. He got them from me, Miss <laughs> Attorney General. So come on, come get me. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. But I don't like what you're engaging in. And we'll get to that. Because now, instead of commenting, you're on Twitter. Mm. You're talking to reporters that don't know what's going on with this case. You dodge Jordan. You dodge me. We know. So we'll get to that. And before we do that, we have, at the end of the show, I'll reveal it. We have special giveaways. This is might sound odd, but it's from the heart, and I'll explain it. We have two burial plots. 
and $1,500 each. So if you're a person whose loved one passed, and I'm so sorry about it, a very good person is donating his stimulus check that he doesn't need and the two burial plots for his parents that have never been used, and we can help you get some dignity for the one you love. That's one. Number two, I have a hundred cases of beer donated to me to give to first responders, frontline workers, doctors, nurses, deputies, cops, correction officers, paramedics, firefighters. I will tell you where you can come pick up your free case of beer with the love and respect from all of us in the community. Now, but before we get into it, let me tell you that the No Bullshit News Hour Facebook Live portion is brought to you by our good friend, Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth, 248-663-4748. I will remind you for Luke that overreaction is not a strategy for the long-term investor. It may be for the short-term investor. And if that's the kind of investor you are, he knows that side of things too. Look at the markets, look at the Federal Reserve rate, Corona out of it, what does it mean? The stock market's doing well. Is it rational? Is it fear? Stocks or bonds? What do you do? Call Luke Nowak at Pinnacle Wealth, 248-663-4748. Get advice, get a strategy, and position your investments, retirement, and college savings plans for the long term or the short term. And always remember. Security is an investment. <laughs> Advisory services are offered through Royal Alliance Associates Inc., a member of FINRA, SIPC, Royal Alliance Associates Inc. is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, and services referenced there are independent of Royal Alliance Inc. Mark, do you guys do that on uh, yeah. on the Drew and Mike show? Yeah, I guess do you, re- do you read that a little bit? Uh, I don't. Drew does. Drew can fly through it. I almost want to have you guys have a contest to see who can do it faster. So when you read them, you don't, you don't read that? Oh, what, oh, when I read it, yeah, I fly through it as fast as I can. You have to read it, right? It's the law. It is the law. Can we just say, like, look, dude, this is Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. And if there's another Royal Alliance Associates, Inc., it's not this Royal Alliance thing, Inc. (laughs) Yeah. And just to call him and take his uh, financial advice, and certainly never from a podcast. Oh, and when we're giving out the beer, uh, let me tell you something about Luke real quick. Luke's got a thousand bucks to help you bury your loved one. Luke's going to hand out beer to the frontline workers because Luke's that kind of guy. He's not, he's not bullshit. Might as well do David Hall, right? Since we're talking money. Yeah. Get Get him out of it. David Hall and Hall Financial care about the community. And that's why the team at Hall Financial is working from home and around the clock to help people save money by refining. It's a great time to look at your options. And that's why many people are refinancing right now. If you haven't refinanced in the last year, Hall Financial is here to help. Now is the time to lower your monthly payments, folks. I'm serious. I'm not just reading this. Keep some extra money in your pocket because we're looking through the couch cushions. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Call Hall Financial, 248-308-5000. If you're worried the coronavirus um, uh, gets in the way, remember that homes can be appraised without someone stepping foot inside your home. They have drive-by appraisals. Hall's Financial Services is the fastest in the business. That's why they've nearly 1,500 five-star reviews from Michigan homeowners alone. Go to our webpage and click on the logo and get started or call 248-308-5000. Hall Financial, lower payments, better options, more personal attention, NMLS 1467435. And David called me this week. And said? He goes, dude, the ballad of one lung four tuck. <laughs> Whoa! He said it was like a movie, like uh, like L.A. Confidential that I've never watched. I think it's more like a Netflix series. I was waiting on the next episode. Okay, so you yes, guys know. Okay, so this guy is he's an armed robber. He's waiting to be sent to the state pen. COVID hits. Nobody's getting sent anywhere except ground zero of all of it is the Wayne County Jail. And very few reporters even refuse to touch it, but it's true. Right. And they take him to the hospital to die and he lives and he's on the lamb. And I put the word out on the street. I'm trying to help the guy get him off the street before he gets us all infected, before he dies. And some kids are playing around, poking him with a stick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
We don't need that. We didn't need to do that. So he and I had about a dozen conversations. This is somewhere about number nine, right? I interviewed him a lot. And I was just like, oh, geez, why don't record him, get him on the podcast? So here he is. Good morning, Charlie. Morning, David. How are you feeling? I don't feel too bad. I don't feel too bad. I'm just laying here. You sound much better than yesterday. Yeah, I think every day I'm improving a little bit more. You only got one lung, because I had my lung removed from lung cancer back in September of 2000. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm a survivor. You're the one. Lung, you're the one lung COVID bomb. Yeah. Hey, listen. I I got a question. Okay. Hold on. Let me mute this TV. Okay. Okay. Do you got the release papers that they gave you when you were in the hospital in your death fog? I when I got out, I. I discarded them, but I, I put them under a rock when I was walking from the hospital, so I know where I got them at. You know where they're stashed? Yes. I'd like to find those, because I want to know which judge signed your order. I think it's Judge Bozzi. Well, that's your judge, but did, was it on the paperwork? The paperwork only said that I had a bond of twenty one fifty. What, $21,500? No, two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. But you didn't pay that. No, I didn't. So they lied. Exactly. Oh man. To to be clear, you know what? I know you say you're innocent, but you were going to what prison for five years for armed robbery, right? Yeah, which I didn't do, but yes, I had to plead a deal because I'm a four-time habitual. Right, 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 right. You weren't going to beat it. You you were innocent. You had to take it and blah, blah, right? Right. Okay. So you woke up, what? You 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 were in the Wayne County Jail. You caught the COVID in there, right? Right. And then uh, how bad were you? I didn't know I had it. Why'd they take you over there then? Because I, um, um, you were sick, but you didn't know you had COVID. Yeah, exactly. And you had one lung. Right. Couldn't breathe. You're having difficulty breathing, yes. So then you go to the hospital and you get worse, huh? Well, you could say that, but it seems like I'm pretty resilient. When I had my hiatal hernia surgery, they said I healed quickly. Yeah. I was in the hospital for two months. With a uh, hernia. We're not talking about your hernia, man. We're talking about the COVID. How you got okay. out. So they took you to the hospital and changed you to the bed, right? Right. They thought you were going to die. Right. <laughs> and, and you walk up one day and the chains were gone. Is that right? Well... Yeah, they had two guards sitting in the room with me for two days, and then they just got up, unchained me, brought my clothes in, and gave me that bullshit and paperwork. Then what happened? Then I stayed in the hospital until I got up one day in the middle of the night, looked outside, saw that nobody was there, put on my clothes, and I walked out. Like a get out of jail free card. Exactly. You couldn't believe it. it was a birthday. It was like uh, two to three days after your birthday. Exactly. So they brought you your clothes, right? Right. Your shoes? Yes. With the laces in them? No laces. Oh, they didn't give you your laces back? No. Where did you get the phone? The burner phone? From Metro PCS. Uh, I went over a friend's house. They loaned me a hundred dollars. I, I took $85 and bought a phone. So let's see if we get this right. You got a raging case of COVID, one lung, you're red hot. For some reason, the deputies unchain you. You lay in bed for two days, uh, case in the joint, wondering if anybody's going to come get you, trying to get a little bit stronger. 
Then on Friday night, you just decided to make a run for it. Well, I didn't make a run for it. The opportunity presented itself. Yes. It's like, it's like, let's say I was locked up. I don't know. I'm a big movie buff. But, you know, you ever saw that movie 28 Weeks? No. Okay, it was about a zombie end of the world type shit. But anyway, the guy was in a coma. He wakes up and the pandemic happened and everybody was dead. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the way I feel what happened here. You're in a zombie movie. Exactly. <laughs> Shit, we okay, we got a we got a what do we got here? We got a four strike violent felon with one lung, raging case of COVID, no shoelaces on the streets of Detroit. You're, you, that's my life story right now. And and what do you discover when you're out there? Like uh, I, I'm assuming you walked a lot, but did you take public transportation? Yes. You did. What, you take the buses? Yeah, they got three bus rides now. And you availed yourself of that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. And you availed yourself of the free buses? And if it was available, that's the only way. I can walk as far as I can walk, and then I hop on the bus. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but they got it now that the bus is, uh, you go in through the back door, they got the they got the uh, social distancing mm -hmm. where you can't sit next to people. Right. I've been trying to be socially responsible, not <laughs> spread it. But I got to get around and I'm, I'm living. I'm not just supposed to just pop up and die. No, you're not. And so you take the bus and when you head to the city limits. Right. Why do you leave the city? Because I thought I could get better care out here in the suburbs because the city is a hot spot. And I'm sure it, it, it just makes sense. If there was a nuclear war, you want to get away from ground zero as much as possible. So this is my, my nuclear war. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you're the guy who's radioactive. What the people we're trying to get away from is you. I don't know what to say to that. Fuck it. Fuck it. So you get to the burbs, and what do you do for food? That's why I'm in the hospital. Well, before you got there, you, you took a couple days, right? I took a day. Yeah. Did you go I went over a friend of mine's house. He had some commodity apples. I ate those. Yeah. That's some apples. Yeah. You got you got some money for a motel, right? Yeah, she volunteered because she loved me, but she didn't want to put herself in a position because she has her grandson staying with her. And I can understand that. She didn't want her grandson getting sick. So she bought you a motel for the night, gave you some right. apples. You got yourself a phone, and you stopped at the gas station, you told me, right? And got yourself a nice sandwich. Exactly. What kind of sandwich? It was a turkey and turkey sandwich or something. Yeah. It was just one of those gas station sandwiches because... Um, wait, wait, turkey and what? Have, turkey and... Cheese. Tur what kind of cheese? Provolone? Swiss? It had to be white, so it was Swiss. Yeah, you got a turkey and Swiss. What else did they have in the cooler there with, you know, you, you were pawing through? Like uh, egg salad? They had they they had a turkey salad, but I'm not a big turkey salad eater. Right. What what about uh, turkey salad? They have um, corned beef and and rye. I, I didn't see a corned beef. Ham and cheese. Yeah, they had ham and cheese. Oh um, yeah, right there in the cooler there, you know. Right. Right there, radioactive nuclear guy with one lung going through the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> It is amusing to me, but it's amusingly sad, bro. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, you, you know, know, look. You don't know where life is going to take you. And I got to say to you, look, congratulations. I mean, you hit the lotto here. You're you're supposed to go to prison. You know, you got one lung. Who knows if you're going to survive those five years, right? 
Yeah. Okay. I, that, that's why I, I took the deal because uh, I said I'm at the end of my life expectancy. You know, yeah. I was trying to take a deal, the best deal possible. But I didn't do it, Charlie. But uh, I had to, to minimize my losses. You ain't going back to prison, are you, dude? What do you think? No, I'm not. It's not going to do it now, right? They, they they fucked up. You're gone. Right. You got a burner phone. or Okay, you said you're in the hospital. Uh, you're not going to tell me where. Not yet. I got to get your trust. Okay. Well, you're going to convalesce. You got a burner phone. I can't find you that way. You're using an alias, right? Right. You're not in that hospital using your name because, like, once I write this story, they're going to be looking for you. I want to tell you that. Okay. But you, there's I'm nothing prepared. illegal. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm, what? I'm prepared. What do you mean you're prepared? You said they're going to be looking for me. I'm going to be prepared for them to look for me. Oh, dude, what does that mean? No, I'm, I'm not threatening anything. I'm not a violent person. Says the four-time felon. No, I'm serious. I, I belong in a mental hospital, not jail. Yeah, your, your your girlfriend told me you're bipolar and you get you get a little bit crazy when you don't have your meds. Exactly, but they just gave me my meds this morning. But you, they put you out of the jail and then they, they didn't give you any meds, did they? When they put you out of jail. No. Oh, dude. So wait a minute. Let me get this. Let's let's review. A one lung, bipolar, shoelaceless, four time violent felon. With a raging case of COVID on the city buses, making his way to the gas station sandwich cooler in the suburbs. Yes, that's a quick synopsis. Damn, bro. Okay, so you, you got an alias, you're convalescing, you spent the night in a motel, got those sheets all dirty. Not Now that woman that changed those sheets doesn't know if she got it, right? Worried about her. Shit. Think about that. Did you think about that? Yeah, I thought about it. What'd you think? I mean, what are you going to do, I guess, right? What can I do? It's a zombie apocalypse, bro. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm a little bit angered. Like I said, congratulations to you for hitting the lotto. You're, you're out there completely legal. Complete, you're completely legal. You've broken no laws. Some judge and some sheriff's official got rid of you and you're out there but I'm outraged that they would throw you away like that and expose the rest of us like that yeah I don't want to contaminate anybody fuck so you're going to get better and what are you going to do you're going to hit the state line you out of here that's the goal the proverbial midnight train to Georgia I don't know if it'll be Georgia but Cause I've been there, done that. Yeah, I just proverbial means proverb means you know that not necessarily Georgia. It could be the proverbial train to Arkansas, but there's no song like that. Maybe South Dakota. South Dakota. I just, as we're talking to the phlebotomist, she said I can get a job. It's only six weeks, so when I get out, I still be fifty. I'll be fifty-eight. Maybe I'll reinvent myself as a nurse. In the nursing field. But you're only 53 right now, so you're already, are you telling me you're resigned to the fact that you probably are going to prison? I know I'm going to eventually get caught. Yeah, but you're going to make a run for it anyway. It's called survival. Damn, dude. Damn. Fuck. So how fucked up is how fucked up is it in that jailhouse? It's bad. <clears throat> Give me a quick little rundown. I was in a ten man cell with one ten man pod with uh, ten different guys. There's no social distancing there because. When you go to watch TV, you got to stand up and watch TV through the bars. So that's all I did. So 
So that's how I got close to people. But yeah. there had to be a depth in there that brought it in. Because we heard that the depths, there were so many depths catching it. You know. About 200 of them, dude. Really? Yeah. They had the, did you ever go see the doctor in there? Remember the big fat doctor, Dr. Angelo? I never saw the doctor in there. Yeah, well, the two doctors are dead. The commander of the jail is dead. The chief corporal is dead. 200 sheriff's employees got the shit. And nobody will say, how many of you guys? I think, why do you think they let you go? I know what I think. Because uh, I'm a liability. In what way? That I could uh, eventually sue them. Yeah, here's the thing. I talked to those deputies. They thought you were going to die anyway. Right? There's like no way. They had you on a machine. You had one lung. They're like, he's checking out. So they released you. The theory amongst those guys, and me too, is there's one of three things. If you died in their custody, you become a statistic and an embarrassing one. Two, it takes six deputies around the clock to guard you, and they want to save money. Number three, if you're indigent, which you are, and, you, and you're uh, in their custody, they got to pay your hospital bill. So if they cut you loose before you die, the bill goes with you to the grave. Any way you slice it, you didn't die. Right. You're like a cockroach, bro. You're just never going to die in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I'll be a cockroach. All the way to Georgia. I got family down in Georgia. Uh, really? No oh, shit. Yeah, I got a sister down there. She moved down there after I moved down there. I moved back eight years ago because my mother was in bad shape. But she ended up passing away. So you really got nobody in life, do you? I got my daughter. She ain't going to take you. No. You burned that bridge, didn't you? Be honest with me. She loves you, but you can't live with her. If I know a guy like you, she don't want yeah. you. Yeah. I burned a lot of bridges, Charlie. Well, hard luck. You know, I mean, that's that's the life. I, I'm not going to hate you. You never murdered anybody, did you? I know. Okay, look, you got a birthday present here, right? You got a couple of... They're going to get you. Right. And I, but, you know, I, I know you're going to run, just like the movie. Fuck it, give it a shot. You're the, you're the one long running man. But... You know, take this opportunity, sniff the, the, the clean air. You got a second lease on life. Turn yourself around, man. Don't fuck up no more. Yeah, I'm trying, Charlie. Maybe, I don't know, man. I, you know, maybe this COVID thing will pass because, you know, the COVID's in the prisons, man. So, either way. Yeah, they don't tell us nothing. We just hear it through the grapevine. Give me one more thing before I hang up, because I, you know, I got to get on with the day here, but tell me which gas station you went to so I don't fucking go there and go through the sandwich rack. <laughs> uh, it was a mobile gas station. Well, there we go. Mobile gas station in the suburbs. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do Sunoco, bro. Yeah, I don't blame you. All right, well, listen, uh, any, anything else at Eve? message for the leadership out there like if, if it wasn't you I mean they, they fucked up letting you go I mean you know would you be outraged if you were me yes yeah I would be and you were watching TV in the, in the hospital in the jail right right you see the silly shit they're talking about the governor on Saturday Night Live and you know I don't, well we don't they had 10 o'clock cut off so we didn't, uh, they locked us down at 10 o'clock, so we couldn't get to Saturday Night Live. But I saw uh, a snippet today of uh, the parody of the governor. It's kind of silly, isn't it? Like, what they're talking about in the media with the makeup and the, and the uh, fake press conferences, like, you are 10,000 light years away from the bullshit they're talking about on TV. You're the real deal. You're really what's happening. Yes. I mean, you're on. I never, I never thought life would end up like this. 
but you gotta roll with the punches. All right, dude. We'll take care of that lung of yours, and uh, I'll holler at you later. Okay, thanks, Charlie, for right. checking on me. See you, bro. Okay, bro. He's leaving, leaving on that midnight train to Georgia. Shotgun over Zoom, Charlie. <laughs> Would you make it that, Karen? You know, I think his last words are probably the saddest. That he never thought his life would be like this. I mean, everybody starts out at a point where they, I, I know people want good things. They want to be good people and, and make the best of their lives. And then life starts to happen. Some people take better choices. Some people make poor choices. And as a result, they may end up someplace that they never expected to be. That was that was very that that kind of touched me when he said, you know, I never thought my life would that, that my life would end up here. That's pretty sad. Who, who are you more Listen upset? Or who are you more upset with him or the people that were supposed to keep him detained? Well, look, I'm, he, he made his choices. You know, he's, he's done some bad things. Pay for it. Right. right. But I am absolutely outraged that they would leave him lying there like a mm -hmm. sack of garbage mm -hmm. yep. to die. And he doesn't die. And all of this nonsense, you know, like, look, I mean, Detroit City has more COVID deaths than the entire state of Texas. And none of this, you just heard it, ladies and gentlemen, none of this will be chronicled in the postmortem. You know, when they do their scientific studies and what is it called, Karen? The the tracking, the social tracking. Mm -hmm, the so, right. The social tracking. Yeah. This isn't so even the it. first story I did out of that jail about them kicking an inmate out and the inmate getting on a bus. The other guy was off to Taylor, remember? And he got mm -hmm. lost and he ended up in Southfield and then he took a cab and then he died. And then the funeral home came and picked him up and no telling how many. It's so fucked up. But the system is broken all over the place, Charlie. It is. It's, we talk the about system this is not place. broken. I, you know, the those who occupy the chairs of the system are broken. The okay. it, it look, it's all this. I don't. I just don't find myself believing in the political parties anymore because they're businesses. And That's so true. the governor has been silent about this. The Attorney General got some dentist dental masks donated to the jail for the inmates and then put out a press release, Ugh. like a self-congratulatory press release. This is your job to prevent this. And everybody's in the Democratic Party and you don't want to embarrass the sheriff. And the county executive used to be the sheriff and the mayor of Detroit used to be the county executive when the jails collapsed. Remember Bob Ficano and his people, $400 million went missing. Four hundred million. And we got a guy getting on a bus. That mobile station's by my house, by the way. So if you don't think we're connected, yeah. well, we are. And you heard the guy. He didn't want to get anybody sick, but fuck it. I got to live. Now, before you update what happened to One Lung uh, Fortuck, what, uh, why do you think he was so easily let go? Because you, you, you had some theories, which all seem to hold a lot of water. I mean, why'd they kick him? It was in this in the story, but yeah. um, one. It's money. Money. Two, embarrassment. Because now uh, some reporters have picked up the jail in a little bit of a way. They are testing the inmates there. 70 of them so far have been tested, and like 35 have come positive. That means so far we know 50% of the guys getting tested in the jail are red hot. Yeah. You should remember 
They've let six or seven hundred people out in the last five weeks or so. Without testing. How many of the, how, without testing. That affects us. For, forget it if the guy is a shithead and he's going to prison. This is about our children. We're, we're all staying home, and I think rightly so, you know. I'm not going to Lansing with a with a gun. You know, I'm I'm, I'm going to follow the orders. But not to have a statistic, not to have to pay for his medical bill, not to have to pay for his guards. That's it. That's what it was. You don't think I'm being talked to by the sheriff's employees who are dying, who are infected, and they're out. They don't have gloves. I'm still getting... I took them a bunch of masks and gloves. They ran out. I got doctors at DMC calling me for equipment. You know, I got cops calling me for equipment. This is bullshit. I don't look at the polls. I look at the life I'm living in. And this whole thing was mishandled. I don't care what poll they took. I don't care what TV station uh, you you watched the, the governor giggle. Fact of the matter is, they're not telling you the truth about the deaths in the prison. That's a matter for the governor and the attorney general. They're not telling you how sick they are in the jails. That's a matter for the governor and the attorney general. They never locked down the nursing homes where they estimate 20% of the deaths occurred. No one has been telling you that the nursing homes were accepting people because they're for profit and they were bringing in sick people. And the sick people got people sick. This is this is outrageous. And when this thing, when it does come back, and it'll be back in the fall, I'm holding their feet to the freaking fire. You got to get your house in order. And I'm not buying socially distanced, you know, press conferences where nobody asks a goddamn thing. Am I wrong here? No, no. The press conferences have been a joke. Wow, there's not a hardball question at all. That's why, don't don't come on, I don't care. I already know the answer. You don't want people to see you not being able to answer it. Mm-hmm. There's no this, way you could justify a one lung, one lung four talk. This is the other thing too. People rely on what they see uh, at, at six o'clock. They, they do. And I told you, I think it was last week, how they stopped reporting Detroit's numbers in with the lead story every day. I noticed that. And they just don't mention it now. Is it on the website? Is it, okay, maybe, I don't know. But they were no longer included in that opening report. If you start to notice now, it's also not the lead story. It's getting pushed farther and farther back. It's the, it's the weather. It's a drive-by birthday party. It's a something else. But I say that to say that as people rely on that one source, they're going to start to feel like, mm, well, maybe it's not that important. And they're going to start to forget all these other factors that are still existing. And, and you know, it's yep. manufacturing we're not in a consent. Place. Yeah. So, manufacturing consent. Because the, the story now was, and I, I'm going to give it to you the way that it was presented, not how I think about it, how I think about these people, right? But a bunch of gun-toting rednecks ran up to the Capitol, right? And we got to wear bulletproof vests and look out. Well, look, here's the thing. The crowd wasn't as big as you said it was. This was no Bundy Ranch. This wasn't, nobody pointed guns at the police. I was at the Bundy Ranch. I was at the bird sanctuary in Oregon. I was on the border with the Minutemen militia. Remember them? Yes. They're going to they're hold guns on the, on the migrants and stuff. I've been to Arizona. I've seen this. This wasn't that, but this is going to be the new story. Now, but, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, Charlie. I was the just, couch you know. potato, the couch potato um, commentator will take that. Like, you'll get this. You said it before the show started. Well, what if black people went up there with guns? Right. They wouldn't have made it that far. That's okay. the whole thing. How about this one? Yeah. Instead of fucking asking, why don't you try? Why don't you see what happens? It is your right. You know, You're so right. the commentator who fashions himself to be a leader of civil rights and stuff. Go ahead. Take your guns. You're allowed in the Capitol building. That's our right. And see what happens. Because Bobby Seal of the Black Panthers did that in the late sixties in California, <clears throat> the, you know, the black Panthers, they were, right. they were doing armed patrols against cops and Ronald Reagan and the, the Republican controlled uh, legislature passed a law outlawing it. 
after the Black Panthers showed up there with their weapons. Yeah. So Bobby Seals got the balls to do it instead of sitting there saying, I don't think they would have come out alive. That's pandering, dude. It's easy. It, it's, it's too easy. Mm-hmm. Like you go up there with your gun and see if you're a freedom lover and you think the government's overreaching, push the government. Yeah, that's do not true. Take this, do not take this to mean because do not take this to mean point guns at your brothers. Because when I go to the Bundy Ranch or I'm in the middle of a standoff in Oregon and we're all worried about it's going to be a gunfight, I'm standing there with a microphone like this going, bro, bro, who is the gun for? Uh, the tyrannical government. Who's that? That's not the governor. <laughs> that's not the, that's not the senator. They're not coming out here. You know who's coming out here? The state trooper who is in your unit in Iraq. Your brothers. Why would you point a gun at your brother? Yeah. Don't do it. Let's not do this. So I'm not for taking your guns up there and making it a show. It's your right. That's the law. I'm not going to tell you not to. That Again, I absolutely abide by the law. That's the law. You have a right to do it. But I'm not there to menace anybody. And you know, don't bullshit me, though. I'm not bullshitting you. You're menacing people with that thing. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what it's for. Well, they know that's going to they know that's going to be the circus too, which takes away from right. the legitimate argument of when do we open back up? And that's what 100%. the argument. Yeah. And you know what? They sent out a press release for us squirrels to go follow them. Yeah. We, and we dutifully did it. Had you ignored them, hmm, I don't know. I want you to it's go a shit show. I want you to go back to uh Fort Tuck cuz since you've talked to them there's been quite the update, and he has traveled even more so. Do you want to fill he's, he's, people he's in? Traveling. Let me remind you, that was one of many, many, many yeah. talks and interviews I had. So you could see how I, I was just trying to walk him back through the details he told me. Just so you, I also wanted you to see how I work as a reporter. All of that stuff was in Deadline Detroit. Go there. That's where you'll find my writing. I haven't died. We're, we're, <laughs> we're pushing things forward. There's an update. Headline Detroit just yesterday. I will give you the dramatic reading. The ballot of one lung for Tuck ended not in a bang, but in a bathtub. The COVID carrying fugitive was captured early Thursday morning with his pants down. His early morning shower interrupted by gun wielding sheriff's deputies. David Arthur Fortuck was taken into custody at approximately half past one in the morning after conniving his way into the Detroit home of a longtime friend which was being watched. He knocked on my door and begged to use the shower, said Trevious Lane French. I didn't want any trouble, so I let him in. Then he started knocking on my bedroom door where I was hiding from him. I told him if he opened it, it was gonna be trouble. Lane French had purchased a nine millimeter handgun just last week after Fortuck, who was also bipolar and known for fits of anger, informed her that he was on the lam. Fortuck, 53, had been awaiting sentencing on an armed robbery conviction when he fell ill with COVID-19 at the Wayne County Jail in Detroit. He was taken to Harper Hospital where Fortuck's health rapidly unraveled. He was left for dead by sheriff's officials, unshackled from the gurney and issued discharge papers. Making a marvelous recovery and seeing he was no longer being guarded, Fortuck beat up for freedom. He described his week long odyssey as one of motel rooms, gas station sandwiches and free bus rides. He promised he would not turn himself in. He promised to make a beeline for the state line. Radioactive with the lung disease, it is unknown how many people he may have infected. Fortuck was enjoying his hot shower Thursday morning when a second knock came to the door of Miss Lane French. It was the sheriff's deputies with filter masks on and handguns drawn. They were real respectful, said Miss Lane French. They were very nice to tell you the truth. Fortuck was ordered to dress. He was masked, handcuffed, and driven downtown to the county jail for reprocessing, breathing on the deputies the whole way. Oh, man. At least he's back in custody. So he going to the can. Good luck, hard luck. I told him I was going to give him the nickname hard luck, and he says, I like that. So I don't know. A little more flattering than one lung. Yeah, which one should we use for the history? Is it hard luck or one lung? Um, I I like one lung. I kind of do, too. Me yeah. too. Me it's too. Different. He kind of made yeah, a like lot. He kind of made a lot of his own hard luck too. 
Oh, he did, dude. Yeah, he did. And I'm relieved for his uh, girlfriend. She sounded like she was in a lot of fear. But now let's think about this. He think goes. About her. He goes back to jail. So he's back in the petri dish. Yep. All over again. The problem's not solved. We're still recirculating, recycle, recycling a virus. I mean, so what's changed Ex- other than him coming out long enough to provide greater insight into well, look, the exposure? And, once, and that? once he once he's done, he's immune. I'm thinking we don't know yet. We still don't know enough about this virus. Yeah, but we don't. He's know. immune, but he's he's still infected. He what he yeah. did was he he left the hospital. They 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 put him out. You know what I mean? They're not going to have him for all those days. They got him stable. That doesn't mean he's still not radioactive. That's now, true. Now he's in a, in a in a in a car with deputies. But but did he but did he probably and this isn't a challenge to any of the hospitals. But you know I mean we 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 uncovered some serious disparities here, whether they're racial or economic. Do you really think that he got top notch service while he was there? Or they figured okay, this is a prisoner. The deputies are gone. Let's just let him go. We need this bed. Oh, what you do mean? You mean did did Harper kick him out? Whoever, but if he had okay, discharge I'm, papers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. No, I'm saying not kick him out. I'm saying Charlie, what? Do this. Did, let me. Yeah, I, I got your answer. I got your okay. answer because okay. I, I reported this long and hard. Won't tell you where I got it, but he left AMA against mm-hmm. medical, medical advice. advice. Right. That's they. Mm-hmm. These are the very humane people that work in these hospitals. You know, what I mean, that's why they do it. Mm-hmm. They don't make a lot like you think. It's not like you know, a TV soap opera, you know what I mean? The residents right. make minimum wage. We, we heard from one of them. We heard from the nurses. They're doing everything they can. And this is what the fucking politicians do. They expose my fucking baby and they expose Miss Lane French to a dude knocking on her door at midnight. Oh, come the fuck on. No, 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 no. If you really know what's going on, you know, nothing's going on. This is fake. God damn it. Now, Dana Nessel, that's this next segment is brought to you by ADR Consultants. Can't work? Construction ground to a halt? Not if you're working with ADR. Their clients have had permits issued, visual inspections have been conducted, crews are working safely in full compliance with the law. Employees are getting paid, things are getting built. Don't lay down and die. Get things done legally and with full respect for the emergency corona measures. We're going to come out of this and you don't know how to do it. You're wondering. I'm talking to a lot of people. We're trying to get the system in place. You want to call ADR. They're already doing it. 248-318-9424. Get the job done right, on time, on budget, and correctly. Call Barry Ellen Tuck, 248-318-9424. Honest, ethical, smart, ADR consultants, get back to work. Mm-hmm. Dana Nessel. Dana Nessel. If you remember Dana Nessel, when she was running for attorney general, the very first no bullshit news hour, the very first one, September 2018, was about Flint. We had special prosecutor Todd Flood on. We were already getting wind that if she won the whole investigation, those whole years of investigation were going to be tanked. He was going to get fired and and they were going to start over. Here is her campaign commercial from 2018, in case you forget. If the last few weeks has taught us anything, it's that we need more women in positions of power, not less. So when you're choosing Michigan's next attorney general, ask yourself this. Who can you trust most not to show you their penis in a professional setting? Is it the candidate who doesn't have a penis? I'd say so. Okay, that's good. No, that's good. That's good that you're not taking your penis out at a meeting, (laughs) madam. But my problem is you have no balls. None. You don't. (laughs) Answer the questions from somebody that knows the questions to ask. So remember, we had Jordan Sheridan on from Vice. We had 
work together over the last year, because I can't do everything. An independent guy looking at this case with the statute of limitations coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody in Detroit did a damn thing about the six year anniversary and the statute of limitations. If it hadn't been for Jordan, now, once he puts the story in Vice and he puts the story in the Metro Times, only then do the newspapers pick up Dana Nessel's grave concern over the unauthorized disclosure of investigative subpoena transcripts. That became the story that Nessel might be investigating who gave Jordan these transcripts, not the fact that we haven't gone anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So we do a follow-up. So it's in the Metro Times, I'm on it, my byline too, so you know me in town. Attorney General Dana Nessel's Flint water wall dividing criminal and civil cases may have some cracks. Her communications director, Kelly Rossman McKinney, previously consulted for a Snyder appointed Flint water criminal defendant. Her, one of her, her communications director, one of the people that gives her advice, mm -hmm. gave advice to Snyder back in the day. Her communications director did emergency communication strategy for two of the emergency managers in Flint who were charged and the charges were later dropped by Nestle. She, here, I'm going I'm to do this. So Nestle comes out and says, not to me, won't talk to me, won't talk to Jordan, says to another media outlet that this, we're smearing her like this is some kind of effort to make it seem like she's protecting Governor Rick Snyder. So lo and behold, I'm surprised to see this news clip pop up yesterday. We got that, Mark? Yep, it's coming here. Flint, the city's still reeling from the water crisis. Those in the city eager for justice, and Attorney General Dana Nessel knows it. I understand that it's hard for people when they don't know what's going on. I would urge people to, you know, to at least try to have faith, as hard as that is, uh, in these very uncertain times. And to know that the people who are working on this are incredibly dedicated. Nestle took over the case, the criminal investigation now in the hands of Kim Worthy. And the AG says work is being done 24-7 to get justice for the people of the vehicle city. And the last thing that either of them would ever do is to allow anyone to get away with anything in the event that they believed that they were criminally liable. Last night, Nestle taking to Twitter, sharing her thoughts about the ongoing investigation and the concern that some have raised that her decisions could be politically motivated, that she, a Democrat, may be working to protect the former governor, Rick Snyder, a Republican, all because of their mutual ties to a well-respected PR expert. Nestle says it's outrageous. I had such contempt for the way uh, that he handled uh, state government during his eight year tenure as governor of the state to suggest that I would thwart uh, an investigation and, and dismiss charges to somehow protect him um, defies all reason and logic. And it's a ridiculous statement to make. The work continues and insiders believe charges will be coming. It may not just happen on the timeline many prefer. All right. Back out Charlie, live, and that's the reality. Yeah. People Let me need throw to this remember. out only because one of your uh, Facebook viewers asked a question that I think deserves some, at least, sure. you know, pa Patty's asking. She says, why was it given to, Kim, given to Kim Worthy in Wayne County? Uh, it's an excellent question, right? Because it was supposed to go to the Genesee County prosecutor, right. Layton, who's off the case. Uh, again, uh, look, here's what, is it, what, what's her name, Patty? Yeah. Patty. Okay, listen, you guys can go to, to um to um Metro the Metro Times, all right? Detroit Metro Times, because nobody here would touch this story. I'm just gonna do it. Jordan won't. Troy News said we have already reported it. Free press never called him back. Nobody put it on the air. He only gets on the air once he's on our program. So I'm gonna just walk you quickly through a couple of things in this story so everybody can understand it. Right. Okay. But I, I advise you all to go and read it. We're holding the feet to the fire to make sure this thing keeps going, people. That's what we're doing. It's fair to criticize. We're Americans. It's our right. And if we didn't, the thing goes poof. And I'll show you why. We wonder 
Is there a conflict of interest in Nestle's office? That's fair to ask. Her right-hand woman, her communication strategist, advised two of Governor Snyder's emergency managers, Darnell Early and Ed Kurtz. Early was there when the button was pressed to drink the Flint River water, and Kurtz is the one that signed the order to do it. She also advised ex-Flint Public Works Director Howard Croft on the water crisis. Early and Croft were charged by Nestle's predecessor, uh, you know, Shooty and Todd Flood, the special prosecutor, in 2016 with false pretenses related to the allegedly fraudulent bond deal that led to the water switch. She dropped, Nestle dropped those charges alongside Flint water charges pending against five other defendants, including Snyder's health department director, Nick Lyon, and chief medical executive, Eden Wells, on manslaughter charges, okay? Next, Rossman McKinney also represented Veolia, the international engineering company, right? Who was charged by Schutte with alleged negligence for faulty analysis in the Flint water crisis, okay? Now, before consulting for the emergency managers, Rossman McKinney consulted for Snyder in his administration. I'll give you a quote here. This issue is out of hand. Rossman McKinney wrote to Snyder's chief of staff, Dennis Muchmore, in 2015 about the fallout. Quote, I'm concerned about the implications that this water crisis may have racial overtones. Ugh. Uh, okay, uh, next one. Next one. Snyder's press secretary, Sarah Werfel, right, joined Rossman McKinney's PR firm as vice president of public affairs when she left Snyder and Werfel's husband was the jack off from the DEQ that was telling everybody there's nothing to see here. Are you noticing? Watch how it goes, folks. There's more. Before joining Nestle's office, um, Rossman McKinney publicly spoke out in support of Snyder and against Nestle's predecessor, Bill Schutte's charges against Snyder administration officials, those manslaughter charges I was telling you about. She tweeted, ridiculous overreach. <laughs> the judge called that health official corrupt, and yet we're getting ridiculous overreach. I'm sorry, to me, as a reporter, that's newsworthy. You could call me. This is why she took to Twitter. Yeah. Media outlets. Now, Finally, then I'll, I'll get off it. From the beginning of all this, they said what, what Schutte did was he recused his office. He knew he was going after the government that he worked for. So you assign a special prosecutor like Mueller. We all know this. From the get-go, Todd Flood, the special prosecutor, was ripped as being partisan, that he had donated to Rick Snyder, his campaign. Okay, fair. That's what happens in these grubby little circles. But he also had contributed a grand home, okay? So what happens in these grubby little circles? You, you try to get business as a lawyer. Here's the thing about Rossman McKinney. She donated twice to Snyder's campaign. Hmm. So what I'm saying here is that's a very clever insider say the charges are coming. That means... That means Dana told Hank charges are coming. That's cool. I hope you reinstitute those manslaughter charges for the 100,000 people in Flint that got fucked up on this. I hope you do that. Now, as I said before, there'll probably be some charges on Snyder. I don't think they're going to be, wow, we're hitting him on a felony, uh, punished about 20 years in prison. You'll get his right-hand guy, Richard Baird. That's good. To me, that is PR. What I'm talking about, what Jordan's talking about, what others that follow this case talk about is what about the racketeering? What about the money men? What about the bond deal? Right? What about that? See, it's fine. Here's what's going to happen. Flint, a lot of people have lawsuits, civil suits. They're going to get paid. I'm glad. You should be glad. Right? That's easy. Government just writes a check. Look like heroes. Okay. We're going to get 
a couple of misdemeanors, but the snakes are still there. You didn't get the machine, the infrastructure, this thing that goes on and on and on and on and on. Take away the R and the D, and it's all about me. It's the elite. That's what's going on. That's why everybody's losing their mind. She doesn't want the machine to stop. It, dude, they're all intertwined. Yeah, yeah. They, it, it can't stop. That's a thing. You know, then she gets she gets run over. I mean, but that's what people don't. I, I think people know um, that that's how politics. That that's politics. That's part of that broken system, um, Charlie. Regardless of who's running it, I, I say this all the time. I just I don't think that the process is conducive to progress. I don't. I think people go in sometimes with the best of intentions. You got so many layers of it. But what, why, why the investigation that was, you know, it was just, it was thrown out. It was started all over. Todd well, Flood had done all the work. I mean, so the people in Flint still don't have clean water or any type of confidence in a system that services them every day. What? Yeah. I might be, maybe I'm just missing it because it's so obvious or it's been out there. But she said in her tweet, you know, um, I may have dropped the Flint water cases because I may be partial to former governor what is her official stand as to why she dropped it other than you don't know the inside you don't know what's going on i see all those files which is kind of insulting especially to someone like you charlie who's read them all i mean what is her official stance as to why she dropped it i think they they were saying and i you know this is you you got me i didn't do my prep on it it's it's a while while since i I remember but i don't remember it either they didn't follow the proper legal protocols. Uh, oh, they were giving on. Snyder officials a break, letting them turn over what they wanted. There was a, a supposed box of evidence, right? We got Snyder's phone. Remember that? That's all. We got smoke. Snyder's phone. That's a smoke and Snyder. Shield. Snyder tweeted, that. "Yeah, I already had my phone, and they already scrubbed Snyder's phone." Well, so the, so, the, statute, the statute of limitations ending last week, Charlie. So now what yeah. from a legal perspective? I mean, so what does all this mean that whatever has not happened there? I mean, and where, look, does, look, it, where does this it, leave this community? It doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot, quite frankly. It's okay. it, it, it was an anniversary to remind people. And the reason I remembered it is because when they dropped the charges, remember, they took the yeah. dog and pony show up to Flint to explain it. And they told the people of Flint were up against the statute of limitations. Now they're saying, no, it's rolling. And it's true because you could say on June 15th of 2014, this shit was going on, right? Mm -hmm. It was, it was a rolling crime. And if you have the wherewithal and the sophistication to bring a racketeering case, that thing can hang around for 20 years. I want to know, see, I was putting the investigation together before Shooty's people were. I'm very aware of it. You know, she's now finding out. We know people. I, we, we know where the the, the uh, subpoenas are. We know where, where the where the depositions are. But she knows that now, Charlie. Yeah, that not, you know, <laughs> she's not happy about that. And, you, and 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 guess what? It's in the news because we forced it in the news because I promised Flint I wouldn't quit. Now, here it's, I'm going to see. Can you see this? Yes. Yes. Two okay. kids. Two kids. You see him happy. Yep. See the water him shrieking. Mm-hmm. See that that truck behind him, that tanker. Mm-hmm. Water tanker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went up to Flint in like seventeen or eighteen, and I took a whole tanker of fresh water, and I brought portable showers. Yep, I remember that. And that's that. little Miss. That's little Miss Flint right there. And that see her uh, friend behind her. See the little guy. Mm-hmm. He had never been in a sprinkler in his life. Oh man, look at him. You see the children. Yeah. This child tweeted out six years, no justice. Yep. So you'll forgive me, Madam, Madam Attorney General, if I care. I'm not your enemy. You know, you don't want to come on. You don't want to talk about it. It doesn't matter. I just thought you might want to. But when you're going to engage in picking a favorite, tweeting and not answering. I mean, there's a story. You should at least refer to what we did. You, you got my phone number. I'll, I'll explain exactly what we did like I just did. It's a conflict of interest, minimum. It's fair. It's newsworthy. And I say to my community, no, nah, you're not being served well. I'm not a rancher and raver. You know what I mean? Here, look at my desk. 
I do a lot of work, man. A lot of work. This isn't you do it so me. neatly, Charlie. <laughs> I, I, I do clean up. Like I got to clean up. <laughs> I burn my documents. You I should. My, <laughs> my, my friend said I should keep them for the archives. And I'm like, what? There's going to be a Charlie LaDuff wing at the Michigan Journalism Hall of Fame? Yeah. Or a museum. We should have a museum, a LaDuff museum. Put La- all your stuff in it. LaDuff yeah, Library. We think, we, we think too much of ourselves. You know, the no, museum. That's not, that's, not, that's not gassing you up, Charlie. That's talking about the information uh, and the research that you've uncovered. It's got nothing to do with that. It's the fact that, you know, when people find things that nobody else has discovered, they put them someplace where everybody can see them. That's what I'm talking about. You just reminded me of one more thing. What's that? You, re- you guys don't remember, but our very first bullshit news hour was about flint todd flood and Todd Flood was our our very first guest he he didn't say a lot but i think he was shocked i knew more than he thought i knew okay so let's see here i'll just go from the hip at that time two emergency managers were charged as we read okay darnell early and jerry ambrose were cooperating with the investigation the emergency managers were said to be cooperating in the big racketeering scheme as soon as candidate nestle and we all knew she was going to win because as we told bill shooty he was was like fucking wooden look just Mm -hmm. too wooden you know what i mean Mm -hmm. She was saying she was going to kill this if she was elected before she looked at one piece of evidence. Immediately, those negotiations stopped. The emergency managers stopped negotiating. In my mind, because you're not the attorney general, you're a candidate, that could be construed as obstruction of justice. You stuck your nose in the middle of a very serious case. They were cooperating deals were getting cut those are gone so i'm a real interested and i really hope you do bring it and i'll applaud you and i know you have a big book that was handed to you about the schematic of how this thing worked i know you have that maybe i have that maybe i'm not trying to fuck up your investigation but i sure hope you give flynn and me because every time i flush that toilet i gotta pay for the bonds and flynn that's me doing it. That's you, Karen. It's you, Mark. All of us. Yeah. Everybody in this region. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We suffered it. You're not going to go after the money? She is. So she says, or I'm sorry, an insider says that charges are coming soon. Do you ever expect to see criminal charges? In, in <laughs> truth, in reality, am I being too um, pessimistic about it? I, I, like I said, you know, you, you talk to people, they're close, you know, you can't, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't want to be sure. caught, you know, I don't but you know, this, you know a lot more. <laughs> I got a feeling that those manslaughter charges have to come back because the judge already bound it over for trial. So you can do what you said you were going to do and take a look at it and make sure there's, you know, no stone left unturned. I suspect those will come back. You know, I know people. I know people near Snyder and I know people near Nestle. Some, some kind of charges, I would guess, come for Rick Snyder and his right-hand man, Richard Baird. What they are specifically, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they'll be felonies. You know what I mean? Slaps on wrist, misdemeanor. You might have gone past that with the statute of limitations, but you'll get, they'll get something uh, and a lot will be made of it. Hey, Snyder charged. Yeah. Wow, what an attorney general. I want the schematic. And I will talk, I will lay that thing out once she announces her charges. I will lay out the schematic of what this was. In fact, go on YouTube, do LaDuff the Americans Flint. There's five nice, easy, entertaining videos that will show you who's involved here. Real simple stuff. I like simple. That's that's why you get a big baller like Jordan call me up. Yeah, I'll definitely help you, dude. And that to the a, woman, that was a good piece. Yeah, he's good written piece. a lot of them, man. He's he's very fecund. She does okay. seem, uh, A.G. Nessel does seem, uh, one last point, a little more concerned right now is uh, to the leaks as opposed to the actual crime. Bro, that's mm-hmm. what made the papers. The papers <laughs> are talking about. It's very Trumpian right? of her. 
She, it is. It is, dude. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if she's a one termer either. Like, it all depends if we're going to ask hard questions of people. Yeah. But you know no what I mean? No I'm does. not afraid. I like, like, watch this. Let people please. With the, if you're listening or watching. I'm a measured intellectual person. I don't jump to conclusions. I might have hunches. I go where the evidence leads me. So this is the calm me, not, not the entertaining me. That's what I saw. I would like the answer addressed. I don't like to see the newspapers bite when Nestle says, I'm looking into how these documents were leaked when your readership has no idea what you're talking about because you never published the story about what those documents said. That's, and I worked there. We all know each other, right? I'm not calling you out. But Jesus, if somebody wants me to run their news organization, make you a boatload of money, service the public, and tell the truth. I got my phone on. Why, why is that not happening, though, Charlie? Just, I mean, you know, I mean, once upon a time, and in, in, in one of your other uh, listeners, Rachel, was saying you should teach a course in, jur- like, how to really do journalism so people understand. But at one time, investigative reporting existed. I mean, over the years, it's just, it's like, you know, I have literally seen where the press releases from organizations are read. They're not challenged. There are no questions. There's nothing. It's just like, this is what they said. And so accept it as truth. And it's a disservice and it's disingenuous. I mean, the, the general public walks away uninformed and misguided as a result. Yeah. And I really think the media's right. um, reputation is taking a hit during the COVID. I do. I think what we, did you say? I think, I think the media's um, reputation, reputation is taking a hit during COVID. And, you know, the, the advertising's uh, drying up yeah. and they're mm-hmm. furloughing the people who are left. And there yeah, are some true. great journalists around. Yep. I, I've, I've said their names many times in these programs. Christine McDonald, uh, Paul Egan, Rob Snell. You know, there's there's a lot. I'm, I'm sorry if I forgot. Joel Kurth, Chastity Pratt. You know, there's there's a lot. Uh, um, I, I was just going to keep going on, but there's a <laughs> lot of them. George Hunter. We like George. George. Yeah, we do. George works his ass off. He's the only guy covering cops. I try to do a little bit. He works is every waking hour. That's what he's doing. There's less of them being asked to do more and quicker. So nobody. Exactly. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Especially in television, which, you know, really only scratches the surface anyway, but definitely in the papers, too. And it's well known that the the newspapers just simply steal from uh I mean, TV simply Steal steals from papers. the newspapers. Yeah, yeah. And when the newspapers are starting to crater, you're now starting to see press conferences with no questions yeah. asked. Which is sick. It's like you're just allowing them to beam it into my living room, but we're all sitting there asking questions with each other. Yep. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're and right. L- quite frankly, folks, you're not, most of you, in tune to the depths of, you know, you, it's not a put down. You don't have time to go get yeah. those documents or check the campaign filings or you don't have a long relationship with people or, in, in the county government or the, or the time to, to continue to follow up. I mean, you can take any breaking, for lack of a better word, news story and the story ends. We're going to we're going to follow the story. We'll keep you up to date. You never hear anything about it. So if you think about something that has legs to it, like Flint like the asbestos situation, like the dollars here for the like lung. one lung for tuck, yep. like one two lung. legs, one lung in a <laughs> raging case of bipolar COVIDism. But I'm saying of any of those things. It, so who's going to follow it? And as a consumer, as a viewer, as a reader, if you don't tell me, I get so lost in the next thing the next day, I forget all about it. Well, and that's in some instances what I think is the goal. One last thing on Nestle. If she wants to put this to bed, and get the message out there, it would be to do an interview with someone that knows all the stuff and just answer the questions. Like Charlie? Well, clearly. Look, clearly. I have a big microphone. <laughs> I do have a penis, and I promise not to take it out. Look, I'm not begging. Just I'm not a, begging. But if, if I, I just I think it's amusing. Look, but, here's the thing. Well, madam, the, the, the Wayne County Jail, that's on you. Yeah. That is the biggest COVID cluster around here. It's not far 
from John, commentators' I, offices. I'm going to tell you from a communications perspective, from a person that, that has been and has long served on the other side of that, you cannot run away from the truth. Mm. If, in fact, there's something that exists that you want to convince your constituents is untrue, then you meet it head on. You sit down with Charlie and you say, this is what it really is. This is why it's not the way I think you have presented it. And here are the facts. You can't circumvent that. I don't care how you do it. And if, in fact, you're working with legitimate information, you are doing what you want everybody to think that you're doing, then you have no reason to avoid the truth and a person who is able to challenge a narrative that you're just throwing out there. And that's just, for anybody. It grows like COVID. It, it does. does. I mean, mean, it never goes away. It start like, you know, I'm sorry, man. The people you got around you, I just, you know, I mean, you're not that that seasoned or clever. I mean, you, you've you been getting away with bullshit in this town for a long time. I'm from this town but I went to the top of the Empire State Building. I did. I went to New York and I learned. You know what I mean? And then I went to the West Coast and I learned. I learned how to do it. That's not flying with me. I'm nailing you with facts. Now, bull, I just want an answer. Mike Duggan, you don't want to talk because you know you're in some deep shit with that poison dirt. Whitmer didn't want to talk when I, I did the easiest one in the world, which is Garland Gilchrist, your, your lieutenant governor, had a shitty ghetto house that he didn't fix up. You got butt hurt. So you run. I don't care. It's funny. Dana Nessel. It started with, hey, wait a minute. You're going to shut you're going to shut down the investigation. Could that be obstruction of justice? I asked that in 18. She's supposed to come on fake like she was sick. And then she's on. The internet two hours later at a fundraiser. <laughs> yep, I remember that. Now, who cares? Who cares? Because the facts are what they are. And this is where you're not getting bullshitted, folks. You got one lung, four tuck, polluting, stinking up your environment. He wasn't supposed to be out there. And nothing, nothing. Finally, we're getting some jail stories. Finally, we're getting some Flint stories. You know it is next week's news today. Today on this show. There's a reason we gave up the paychecks. Higher now, shouldn't, missions. Shouldn't you, shouldn't you be getting some type of uh, royalty, you know, <laughs> when your stories and guests are absorbed, when you've done all the legwork? I'm just, I, I'm kind of feeling a little Shark tankish here. We should negotiate some type of royalty for that for you. <laughs> well, let's all say this. I officially decree that the No Bullshit News Hour, my work on Deadline Detroit, whatever news I'm posting on Facebook, that is a journalistic center, and you must say, as first reported by, you can say any one of those, Charlie LeDuff, No Bullshit News Hour, or Deadline Detroit. You must, because that's what they teach in journalism, some integrity. You know, I, had, I didn't know you did that. The New York Times make you do it. You correct your mistakes, and you say, well, you got it. I learned the hard way. Not perfect. Everybody knows it. But I'm trying to be a better person. I'm trying to ask for more. So my kid, I explain to my kid what the national debt means. She says, who pays it back? I say, you do. She says, what do you mean? I said, we borrow and we pay it back over 30 years like a house. I said, I'm going to be 84 in 30 years. You're going to be 44. You're going to be paying for it. And she says, that doesn't seem right. And I said, it's not right. It's not right. The wisdom and that's of children. That. Yep. Yep. Well, they're, they're really smart. Before they get snaky yep. and political. Right? And look, if you went to it, look, if you went, somebody said to me, black woman, it's important to say it because she's like, why didn't you cover this? It's all caps, right? With, with the rednecks, you know. Yeah. Because now you, now, now you guys are getting it. Now you're getting portrayed. I didn't go up there and cover the rednecks tote and guns. I simply wrote back gas money. <laughs> I had no gas money. Why didn't you go? It's cheaper now. What are you talking about? 
But I know if you you guys can go and check on on um, YouTube, you can see me going to the Bundy Ranch and ask him, "What the fuck are you doing?" You can see me in the Oregon standoff, worrying if the feds are coming over the hill. You can see on YouTube when all those dudes in Oregon surrounded the sheriff's department with assault rifles, and the sheriff was shitting his pants, and so was the town. So I, I get just- it. I think people, especially black people, I mean, and and certainly justifiably so, want to feel like at some point other people understand what it's like to be on this side of that equation. And I think that's it. I think whether you went up there, whether you covered it or not, just for somebody to say, wow, this isn't fair. Because if this were the other way around, it wouldn't take place. Uh, Ned Stabler from Tech Town posted on Facebook, he had two pictures. One where this young African-American kid had fallen, his phone had fallen. He reached down to pick it up. The cops pepper sprayed him and attacked him. And the picture from Lansing. You know, we've seen pictures and videos where white people have gotten stopped by cops and they are berating the cops and there's nothing going on. And yet and still, if a black person is pulled over, that nothing has to happen, but they end up getting shot or so. I mean, so that's a reality. And I don't want to hear all that Karen's playing the race card. That's a reality check. Yeah. Sitting in the race card thing. That's a reality. Well, remember, check. like it by any measurement in this country, and everybody knows it, black people get the shit end of the stick. It's disproportional. There's just no doubt about it. Having said, I just want to do it again. A black person is two and a half times more likely to be shot by a police officer than a white person. And yet, Twice as many white people as a number get shot by police than black people. And I'm telling you, what kind of white people? There's also a class issue. And that's who you saw at Lansing. So I would say it would be an interesting exercise. Those dudes in Lansing knew where to put the line. You know what I mean? Uh, They don't look like rich people to me. They didn't sound like it, that's for sure. (laughs) If the new Black Panther Party wants to try their first Second Amendment rights, do it in an organized way like the Black Panthers of old did it. And by the way, they were arrested and their guns were taken. So, Charlie, can you and I go up there? We we open carry and go to the go to the Capitol and just go. Yes. If you have gas money. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for gas. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm not advocating crazy shit. That's not crazy. But, I'm know. just saying, you know, I mean, Charlie, I mean, I, I think about that. I mean, well, first of all, just from, from a, a personal safety perspective, your gun shouldn't be visible because then you, you know, I mean, you should always keep it handy, but concealed uh, and, and have a, a CPL. But at the same time, you know, and I think about it, you know, it's like, okay, if I'm walking around and I have a Who's going to respond to me differently because they can see that I'm actually carrying a weapon? Yeah. It's a statement. Yep. I'm sorry. It you know, it's a. We all know it. I'm mm-hmm. bad. I'm not. I don't want bullshit. You know, the people will get a hold of me and go, "I don't agree with everything you're saying, but I respect you and right. thank you because I respect you too." But that's how I feel about it. I got firearms. I don't do it. You do what you do. I know what I think mm-hmm. about what you're doing mm-hmm. after I ask a few questions. It's the greatest thing about life. You know, you know what I would have done as a reporter. I would have asked, what are you doing? Who's that for? Why are you yelling in the deputy's face or the trooper's face? Right? Come on, man. Yep. And for them to just stand there like it was nothing. I'm thinking like, what? It, the, the only type of pushback I saw were from the sergeant of arms when they were trying to drag the ladies oh, yeah. out. And I, don't, they didn't, I don't know if they had weapons, but they were screaming, don't touch me. You know, like, I'm thinking like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Cabin fever. Is that Probably. what it is? Oh, I think yeah. it's a big part of it. I think a lot, a lot of shit's going to hit the fan. Yeah. And I just want people to know that I'm your brother. Even if you piss me off, I'm your brother. And in that vein, in that spirit, a couple of things we want to do today. Mike Giordano is a retired employee of Ford. He got a stimulus check. He said he doesn't need it, nor does he need the two cemetery plots of his parents because they're buried elsewhere. Mm. So they're at Oakland Hills Memorial Gardens in Novi. He's donating those. 
Luke Nowacki, a friend of this show, will put in another $1,000. Grace Karos from American Coney Island will put in $500. Barry Ellentuck from ADR will put in $250. I will put in $250. Karen? 250 bucks. There's also $600 or so left in a fund to help you with the liner. You need a liner. You can put cremains in there of a few people for mm-hmm. the remains of your loved one. Mark, we won't ask you, man. You're you're out of radio now. You're doing fucking podcasts. <laughs> Nothing. I can scrape, um, I can scrape something together. Okay, pony it up. What where, is it? Where do I where do I do it at? Where do I where you'll do get, I go? You'll get it to me, and we'll get it. All we'll right. get it to uh, to Mike. I'll do it. How much? Well, what, How much? what's what, where are we at with the balance? Let's see here. We got one thousand from Mike. Not doing one thousand from Luke. Five hundred from Grace. Two fifty from Barry. Two fifty from Charlie. Two fifty from Karen. There's six hundred in the cemetery already. We got five. 10, 15, carry the one, six, eight, <laughs> 10, 12, 18, carry the one. We got about, shit, 3,850 bucks. So one another 150. I'll do, so 150. I'll do 150. I'll do 150. 150. Can I pick the okay. outro song? Because we didn't pick an outro song today. It was supposed to be Midnight Train in Georgia. I know. But, but you I can pick the- whatever you want. Okay. Okay. So let me finish though. You pay so, for it, Mark. Go ahead. So, what we have <laughs> really is a is a burial plot and two thousand dollars that can go to a headstone. It can go to you know paying the cemetery for the upkeep in perpetuity. That's what we have. I will put it on my Facebook page. Karen, would you do the same, please? Sure. Okay, I can do put that it, too. Put, when you put it on, I'll share it on my page. Okay, and we get on the, the Drew and Mike. Yeah. Oh, easily. Page. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's going to be a madhouse. Uh, if you don't get it, I'm sorry. There's only two, but it, Mike Giordano, I had to hang up the phone because I, I choked up. It's a strange and yet very beautiful gesture, my brother. Mike's going to handle the stuff because, you know, he's retired and stuff. I got a lot of stuff to do. Now, the second thing. I got some beer yesterday, some cases. The brewer asked me to give them to first responders, nurses, doctors, paramedics, cops, correction officers, deputies, et cetera, frontline workers. No, not postal people, even though I respect you and you are a frontline worker, not bus drivers, because that looks weird for you to get beer. And be driving. I don't want them drinking because they don't they don't drive well. So, right. Plus, I don't know which which bus, whose bus. Yeah. You know, one lung, four tuck. So those are gone. But someone else has donated 100 cases of beer to me to do as I see fit. We're going to continue that gesture this Monday, this Monday at 3 o'clock p.m. until supplies last or 5 o'clock, whichever comes first, 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock at the American Coney Island, downtown Detroit, Lafayette and Michigan, where they meet. That pie-shaped store is the most famous landmark downtown, the American Coney Island. Get a Coney kit. Go to AmericanConeyIsland.com. Have a little taste of Detroit. Deliver to your door safely. Monday, 3 o'clock, I will be giving out the beer. It's it's a gift. It's not under the, the liquor license of American Coney Island. Nothing to do with them. They're not violating, not breaking any law. It is for the law and the medical responders. It's a gift from me. It was given to me. It's mine. I can give it away. <laughs> Bring your ID because I want it to be right. Monday, three o'clock, Luke Nowacki and I will, and probably Grace Carroll's when I tell her she's doing this. She doesn't know it yet. Uh, that's from us to you. That's what we got for you. Charlie, a uh, couple yeah. people are asking, are you going to, on your page, because I see uh, Cliff Martin is saying he has $50, he'd like to donate. Are you accepting additional donations for this burial fund, or are you just cutting it off with just us? Oh, no, that'd be great. Mark, how do we do it? Um, I'm not prepared for that. You know me, man. I'm scared. You can do a Facebook donate. You can do a donation on Facebook, and people can go on, and they, I don't know how that works, we but can, you can actually. Either. We can do a GoFundMe. 
Uh, no, then that's a pers- I don't I th- think people can just go, you can set up to we'll figure it out. OK, thanks. Cliff. No, no, we'll but, but, but no, 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 no. But we got to do it yeah. now since yeah, we're on the since air. With listening right well, now. I, th- when, I didn't even you, think about that. God bless you, Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you post, you can post something on your page and it'll say accept donations. Okay. And so you can okay. you can add a donor button and people are able to make donations in that capacity. Am I going to have to deal with the tax man on this shit? Um, Depends on if you got a good tax attorney. I don't know. I'm just trying to do a good deed, but I didn't I think of that. I don't know. Uh, Sheila Vincent said maybe Cash App. You know, you can, but I don't have a Cash App. Okay, oh, I'll tell you what, folks. Like I, I'm going to post this thing um, soon. Go to Charlie Laduff on on Facebook. Right, I got a couple pages. It'll be there somewhere, and we'll figure it out. Just give give me a second to breathe. I, I'm overwhelmed. That's really nice. I did not think about that. We will figure out some way. And if it's not feasible, we won't do it. Thank you very much. If it's feasible, we will. And I know it is feasible, but we just want to get something done, get it in people's hands and get it done right away. Yeah. Right, Cause we've got we Giovanni said he wants to donate a hundred dollars. Uh, oh, a couple beautiful. people are saying, can they show up on Monday and just bring a check? That's all right. Uh, yeah. So people do yeah. want to help. Um, and so thank you all very much. Um, certainly I tell you what, I got it. You come and look properly social distance. I'm serious. I don't need anybody like, look, look at Duffy's a redneck up at the state capitol, not wearing a mask. And that's socially just, don't have, just don't have an AK-47. <laughs> I, I've been meaning to get one. Those are nice weapons. Those, those things They're are scary, weapons. man. They're, they're scary. Yeah. Um, so if you want to come to the American Coney Island in Bay, you can thank the responders and the necessary, the essential people, you can do that. You can come drop a check. That's where I'll be. So for right now, sure, Monday, three o'clock, downtown at the American Coney Island. And, and then we'll if we, we can figure out the other stuff, we will. Yeah, we'll do that. Cool. Yeah. So and then and then give us a little bit. I, I know people have been ravaged by this and you've lost people. And I know, I know a lot of people can't afford something proper. Just give us a little bit. We'll, we'll probably just put a name in a hat and, and pull it out and we'll get it done. Okay. So um, you, can, you can start sending it now. I, I don't have it thought out. I just know we're doing it. Okay. So I wanted to announce it. And I want to take this second again, Karen. I love you. You are my friend and I'm glad I know you. Thank you, Charlie. Love you too. Mark, this this is getting easy, dude. It's good working with you. Yeah, Mark, Mark's the best. He's Ditto. cool. <laughs> and now a word from Mannequin Joe. Yeah. He's there. Nice. Nice. There we go. Just hey Joey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, man. There he is. Mark- hey, bro. <laughs> the voice of God. How's the liver? How you doing? That's it. Scary. Man, man Don't of, man man of, spoke. Yeah, man, a few words. <laughs> hey, mannequin. Um I know you gave it to me before, bro, but uh, when we're done from one of your 10 phones, just text me your home address so I can mail you a check. Leave it at that. Um, love you guys. Everybody remember, try to love one another. If not, try to respect back. one another. Love you back, guys. Love you back. <laughs> and I can't wait to see what you pick, Mark. I, you know what? I changed it. It ended on too much of a positive note, so I'm, I'm just going to go well, with it. No, positive no, no, good. Come on. Okay. Do what you're going to do. Positive is really good. Well, and then it also hit me. Well, no, my song was a little more negative, but you ended on too much of a positive note. But <laughs> no, if it's fuck it, be negative, man. All right, who am I to judge? All right, you, I mean, I know, I know, you know, um, Rage Against the Machine, right? I do, and I know you like them, so I do not. But go ahead. <laughs> well, this is maybe their. We, this maybe is their. We a- played that one before. Did you play Bullet in the Head? Is that Hey Motherfucker Don't Do It to Tell You? No, that's Killing in the Name of, isn't it? Yeah, okay, uh, roll it, bro. Uh, Bullet in the Head is their song about uh, media and government working together. I thought it fit the theme. It does, but let, remember one more thing. Yes. Je suis Charlie. Long live the press. Yeah.
it's called turn it a stone before you realize it all the clip in oddly color said they back the nine they fire it at prime time the sleeping gas every home was like out the trash and motherfuckers lost their minds just victims of the in-house drive-by they say don't you say how high Just victims of the in-house drive-by They say, don't you say how high Hey, hey. 